Are you afraid? I used to work in an office with a team of people doing data entry years ago. I was surrounded by weirdos in the office, and I pretty much hated them all. I hated the job, and I was looking for a way out, but couldn't seeing as rent cost money and all. Most of the people I worked with were mean and had no business using a computer daily. I liked our boss, which was a gentle guy who just wanted the best for everyone. That's why I didn't immediately quit. This happened after I'd been there for a few months, and I was starting to get to know everyone. There was a younger guy named Tom that had googly eyes for me, and he made that clear. He was a bit of a weirdo, even at first impressions. Tom noticed me in the office and tried to get me to go out to dinner with him almost right away. I told him I had someone else I was seeing, but he must not have heard that. I know what dinner means, and I didn't want to lead him on. I know there was a chance that he could have been just inviting me out to be friends, but very unlikely. When I let him down easy like that, he just kept trying. Over a few weeks, I kept declining to go out with him. I didn't have time to make friends with him anyways, since when I got off work, I just want to go home to my own man. Tom wouldn't stop no matter how many times I told him no. I even got annoyed with it and told him that it wasn't going to happen, but he continued non-stop. This far in, he was starting to make comments about taking me by force, but in the moment I didn't think too far into them. It was only after I thought of a comeback did I realize that he wasn't kidding. There was a full day that Tom was being weird around me and acted like he was keeping secrets about me. He would whisper into someone's ear and suspiciously look in my direction. Nothing ever came out of that, since he was probably telling them nothing about me in the first place, but doing other things to make me think it was about me. That afternoon, I walked out to the parking lot out back, and Tom sprung out from behind my car in an attempt to jump scare me. I was slightly startled. He got up real close to me, to make some bold, weird, and scary comments. He was basically calling himself the alpha that I needed in my life, but wrapped it up by telling me that I will be on him soon. He also got up close and grabbed me by the shoulders to try to hold me in place, so I just pushed him away and got in the car without saying anything else. I didn't think about it because it scared me to think that he might try something, so I just didn't. I did think about going to the HR department, but I thought it might not have been a serious enough thing to bother them. The woman wasn't very approachable anyway. Tom continued to basically stalk me around the office and watch me all the time. When I screwed something up because I couldn't focus because he was siphoning attention from me, he'd rush over to take over the task that I was doing. I knew he was following me because he would just come out of nowhere. I was told later on that he had been seen doing the whole watch me from around the corner thing. I was approached by the boss, who asked me if I was doing okay. When I told him yes, that was the first time I'd ever seen him be aggressive when he told me I was lying. I broke down and told him that someone had been following me and putting me in a bad state. He told me not to worry about it, but to next time let him know when something happens. I believe the boss told Tom to lay off the stalking because he actually did for a bit. About a week later, Tom started again, but tried to be more subtle about it now. He would duck around corners and think I didn't see him. After work one day, I got in my car but I was the only one in the parking lot. I didn't see Tom anywhere, but his car was still there. For all I know, he could have been hiding in the front seat and waiting for me to drive off. On the way home, I stopped at a gas station and noticed that the car that was following me had completely stopped in the middle of the highway like a moron. I didn't directly look at the car or try to recognize it, but if I would have, I probably would have seen Tom in it. When I got all the way home is when I noticed the car had followed me. 
I wasn't paying too much attention because the traffic on the road was a little heavy and, you know, cars follow you for miles. Welcome to the world. I got out of my car in the driveway and I saw Tom creeping by the house. I was a bit angry, but more scared than anything because Tom now knew where I lived. I called my boss who was thankfully still at the office and told him that Tom had followed me home. He wanted me to tell him that I was sure it was him and I was 100% sure. I saw him as clear as day. I also told my boyfriend about it to make sure that he was on alert. The next morning when I came into the office, Tom was looking pretty angry about something. He must have been told off, but then as the morning progressed, I watched his stuff disappear little by little. Our boss had fired him. I didn't want the guy to get fired, but if that had to be done, then oh well. Don't follow me home, you creep. I didn't want anything bad to happen to anybody because I know how people need money, but obviously he really wasn't worried much about that. I didn't have any more incidents with Tom, but I've had run-ins with other co-workers just being awful, but none of them felt the need to chase me home or follow me around the office. They were just little squabbles. I ended up leaving that job for a better one, but with better jobs comes other types of trouble. I may type about them later, but for now, watch out for stalkers. I've got some successful social media pages. I'm no rich e-celeb or anything, but I've got tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of followers and subscribers on my different social media pages. Because of this, I have my fair share of weirdos who message me constantly, and I've even been doxxed, but I've never really felt unsafe. I joined one of those free dating websites, I won't tell you which one, and left out any links to my social media. I didn't want that to influence whether someone messaged me or not. I wasn't sure if anyone would recognize me. A lot of my subscribers and followers are from different countries. Well, after some obvious catfish and troll messages, I got one that looked promising. She was a bit older than me and seemed to have her life together. She had a kid from a previous relationship, but at the time, I didn't think of that as a problem. She had a normal service job and worked for one of those ride-sharing apps on the side. The way she talked, at least through her messages, seemed more mature than the girls who would send me DMs on Twitter. If she recognized me from social media, she never mentioned it. We'd talk about whatever was happening that day, send each other selfies, all the usual stuff. We talked online for a long time, maybe about three months, occasionally making plans to meet in real life, but it never really panned out. That was mostly my fault. My social media pages were basically my full-time job. After a few canceled meetups, she asked me if I was serious about her. Well, I wasn't terribly serious but I didn't want to cut her off or ghost her or anything like that. I appreciated the company, thought we had chemistry, and really thought when we finally got to meet, we'd work well together. When I explained this to her, she was immediately apologetic for even asking. I thought that was weird, but I felt kind of bad too. I guess her patience was running out, because half of the messages that she had sent me from then on were bitter and accusatory, and even outright mean sometimes. But every time that I'd say it seems like it isn't going to work out, she would apologize in a way that was almost like begging and give different kinds of excuses for her behavior that would make me feel sorry for her. Much later, I learned that this was a manipulation tactic, but at the time, I fell for it over and over. Sometime later, the messages would slow down, nearly stopping completely. While I liked that woman for the most part, if she had lost interest, what choice did I have, right? Three other women would message me in pretty much that same week, but there was something weird about their profiles. They were all obvious catfish, I thought, but the profiles had all been made within the same day, the day before they messaged me. I knew right away what was going on. They were all her. They had to be. If she was going to mess with me like this, I was going to mess with her. 
I sent one of the obviously fake profiles a message saying, Wow, you're so cute. The cutest person I've met on this site. Would you like to meet up right now? Like clockwork, the woman I had been talking to video called me within seconds of me sending that message. I answered, and she said, Sorry for the lack of messages, I've just been busy. <laughs> yeah, busy harassing me with a bunch of fake profiles. She asked what I was doing and if I could meet her that day. I said, no, I have a lot of work to do. She said, I see, loudly and clearly upset, and hung up. With impressive speed, I received another message from the fake profile. It said, lol, no thanks, I just heard from my friend what a huge jerk you are, and I could never see someone like you. At this point, I had had enough of this game and blocked all of her profiles, real and fake. A day later, I got a message from one of my friends about some weird comments on my Instagram. When I checked, sure enough, all the profiles were using the pictures from her catfish profiles. Most of the comments were just insults. Why would anyone follow this guy? His content sucks. Stuff like that. But a few comments were revealing information about my family and friends. That crossed a line. After deleting a ton of it, and blocking and reporting her, a lot of my friends and followers did the same. Her last attempt to get at me was messaging one of my best friends and telling him that I made her so, so upset that her and everyone else who knows me should do something about me. I don't know if that was supposed to be a threat or what, but we just laughed about it when he showed me. These days, when I get especially nasty comments on one of my photos or videos, I always think it's her on a new profile. I almost feel bad for her, dealing with whatever it is that makes her act like this. Yeah, maybe I wasn't blameless for never making time to meet her, but after a reaction like that, I'm grateful every day that I never did. I was out with a group of friends at a bar during the early hours of the morning. My girls and I were just exiting the last bar of the night, after bar hopping for hours, and there were people on the strip taking Ubers and leaving. We were pretty hammered and none of us were thinking straight at all. Our DD promised not to get drunk, but she's dumb and nobody was watching her. Even in our drunken states, we were still responsible enough to drive. But, thankfully, we could all waddle back to my place. None of us thought it was a good idea to get an Uber, so you know how dumb we all are. That's only partly true. I suggested Uber, but my friend decided that she didn't want to take a scary Uber ride back home. Upon thinking about taking a running fall back to my house, an older man came walking up to us. And all I remember really was thinking that he was gross and weird. I do remember him acting very strange and telling us all that there was a stalker in the area and warning us to watch out. The experience with him was really strange and creepy. I still wanted to take an Uber, but we all started walking away from the man in the direction of home. While we were all acting stupid on the way home, one of us saw the man who had warned us about the stalker. He was trailing us, and the situation and mood both turned serious. I started losing my headiness, and I'm pretty sure the others felt the same. He got closer and closer, until he was pretty much within talking distance, but he never did anything. He just followed. We were all still too dumb not to lead him back to my house, and ended up going all the way there. When we got inside, we were all freaking out that he was still outside, and he was just standing there on the lawn. We soon tried to go to bed, but most of us thought it would be fine if the door was locked. I didn't sleep much because I kept waking up that night, but when I got up the next day in my groggy state, I looked out the window and the guy from the morning was still out there on my lawn, only he was now passed out in the grass. I called the police to come get him off my lawn, and that was the end of him. All they did was wake him up and tell him to move along. I guess that's all that needed to be done though. After that, I talked to the group and had them all agree with me that next time, we will get an Uber despite what happens. We should have not walked home like that, and the next morning I realized that. 
We also never used our current DD again because she can't be trusted. The three of the girls in the group didn't even remember that we were being followed, let alone pretty much the entire night. We all kind of went overboard with that. But maybe with people like that guy roaming around, we need to control ourselves a lot more. If you like this video, consider subscribing. If you are subscribed, hit the bell icon to make sure you never miss an upload. I just have one question for you. Who is that behind you?